تعجل بالقرآن من قبل أن يقضى إليك وحيه وقل رب زدني علما إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد So last time then we got up to the section regarding الحوض the pond of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and we mentioned Al-Hawb, Majma' Al-Ma' Al-Azim, Al-Ladhi Yada'uhu Allahu Fi Arasat Al-Qiyamah. That it is a large amount of water, a large body of water that will be placed on the Day of Judgment, on the Resurrection, the Lands of Resurrection, وَيَرِدُ عَلَيْهِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And the believers, they will come to it and drink from it. وَهُوَ مِنْ أَوْجَهِ إِكْرَامِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And it is from the methods and means of ennobling and honoring the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And we said, الحوض هو الموقف الوحيد من مواقف القيامة التي لم يرد ذكرها في القرآن The hold is the only thing from the day of judgment that isn't mentioned in the Quran It is mentioned in the hadith in the sunnah وَلَا حَدِيثْ فِيهِ بَلَغَتْ حَدَّ التَّوَاتُرِ That the narrations are multiple So many of them that they are at the level of being mutawatir, multiple narrations, multiple chains. جَمَعَ مِنْهَا إِبْنُ حَجَرْ مِنْ رِوَايَةِ أَكْثَرْ مِنْ خَمْسِينَ صَحَابِيًّا وَنَقَلَ أَنَّ بَعْضَ الْمُتَأَخِّرِينَ أَوْصَلَهَا إِلَى ثَمَانِينَ صَحَابِيًّا So Ibn Hajar, he collected this narration about the hold from 50 companions or more than 50 companions and he transmitted or or reported that some of the later scholars even took it up to 80 of the companions who narrated about the Hawb and then we mentioned هل الحوب موجود الآن is the Hawb already there now يعتقد أهل السنة أن الحوض موجود الآن So we believe that the حوض is already there in existence already now Then we spoke about ما الفرق بين الحوض والكوثر What is the difference between the حوض and the كوثر إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرِ What is the difference between the kawthar and the hawd? So we spoke about this last week as well. دَلَّتِ الْأَدِلَّةِ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْحَوْضِ غَيْرَ الْكَوْثَرِ وَيَظْهَرْ هَذَا مِنْ خِلَالِ مَا يَأْتِي So the evidences, they indicate that the hawd is different to the kawthar. The kawthar is not the same thing as the hold. They are two different things. And there are evidences to indicate that. Al-awwal, al-hawd fi mawqif al-qiyamah. Wa amma al-kawthar fa innahu fi al-jannah. The hold that is upon the lands of resurrection. And as for the kawthar, that is in paradise. The Kawthar itself is in paradise, but the Hawd is on the lands of resurrection prior to paradise. Wa thani, al-dalil al-thani, 
أن الكوثر أصل الحوض ومنه يمد that <coughs> the kawthar that is the source of the water and from there the water feeds the hold so the water of the hold comes from the kawthar so they are two separate things the kawthar and the water comes from it to feed uh, and uh, create that water in the hold that's what we mentioned last time. Then today we move on from the next section. Al Mas'alatul Khamisa. Sifatu. Sifatu Hawdihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The descriptions of the Hawd of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are lots of ahadith to summarize from all of those ahadith these are the descriptions number one that the color of its water is whiter than milk the color of its water is whiter than milk and there's a, a riwayah, أَشَدُّ بَيَاضًا مِنَ الْوَرِقِ This is in uh, Sahih Muslim. So there are narrations highlighting how white the color of the liquid is that is in the hold. Secondly, it is أَبْرَدْ مِنَ الثلج. The water, the liquid is colder than snow or colder than ice. Cold liquid, cold drink that is in the hold. Thirdly, rihuhu atyabu min al misk. That the fragrance from that hold, it is more fragrant than musk. The, the nice smell that musk has, this fragrance of the hold is more fragrant, more beautiful than that smell. Fourthly, طَعْمُهُ أَحْلَى مِنَ العصر. That the taste of it is more tastier, more delicious than of honey. The taste of it is more delicious than honey itself. Fifthly, Kizanuhu, Yani Abariquhu, Kaadadi Nujumi Sama. The the uh, vessels, the cups around it are greater in number than the stars in the sky. The Cups and vessels around it are greater in number than the stars in the sky. وفي رواية لآنيته أكثر من عدد نجوم السماء وكواكبها. رواه مسلم. That the utensils, the the vessels, the cups around it are greater in number than the stars. And bodies of the sky. Number six. Man shariba minhu shurbah lam yadma ba'daha abada. That whomsoever, <coughs> whomsoever tr- takes a drink from it, whomsoever takes a drink from it. He will never experience thirst again. Whomsoever takes a drink from it will never experience thirst again. And seventh, as we already mentioned, there are two trunks that lead into it with the water from the kawthar. 
two trunks that come in with the water from the Kawthar. So those are the descriptions of the Hawb. But there is one very important description we need to discuss in more detail. And that is the actual size of this Hawb. How big is this pond of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What is the actual size of this Hawb? And that needs a bit more time now because there are multiple narrations that talk about that. So, the mas'ala here is masahatul hawd. What is the area of the hawd? How big is it? There, is, there are different narrations. There are multiple narrations. Ja'at nusus to feed tahdeed al masafa bi dhikr mawadi' ma'luma. Wa hadhi al nusus kathira. وبينها اختلاف في التحديد ويمكن نعم so there are ahadith that talk about the size of the hawd by giving real life examples there are several hadith that talk about the size of the hawd the pond of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by giving real life examples it's like if i want to try to explain to you what the distance is between mecca and medina but here we are in the uk maybe many people have never been to saudi arabia maybe they've never been to mecca medina so how can i visualize for you the distance between mecca and medina by giving you examples that you are familiar with So I could say to you, the distance between Mecca and Medina is roughly the distance between Sheffield (coughs) and London. If I say that, now the people who've never been out there, who live here in the UK, you can visualize now what the distance is, because you know what the distance is between Sheffield and London. So then you can visualize and you can... Uh, an illustration is built up in your mind as to what the kind of distance is between Mecca and Medina because I've given you an example of cities that you know of, Sheffield and Leeds. It's similar to that. That's what the messenger did. There are several hadith where the Prophet ﷺ gave them names of places and told them that is the likes of what the Hawd is. So, in one narration, the messenger said to them in Muslim, Sahih Muslim, مَا بَيْنَ عُمَان إِلَىٰ Names of two places. Those are names of two areas, two cities. In another one, إِنَّ حَوْضِي أَبْعَدْ مِنْ أَيْلَهِ مِنْ عَدْن Again, names of two places. حوضي كما بين أيلة إلى صنعاء Again, names of two places. Some of these you've heard of. Aden, Sana'a, etc. What is the distance between أيلة and Aden or أيلة and Sana'a? What is the distance between them in those days traveling? About a month. It would take you about a month of traveling in those days to go between أيلة and Sana'a or أيلة and Aden. To go between those places was about a month of travel time in those days. So in those narrations, the messenger is telling them, my hold, my hold is the travel distance of a month. That if you start at the beginning of the hold, you'll be traveling for a month until you get to the end of the hold. That is a significant size. A significant length, travel distance of a month until you get to the other side of the Hawd. But you see there are multiple narrations in Muslim, in Sahih Muslim, and also of Ibn Hibban, and the Mustadraka ala Sahihain and other places where these narrations, they all indicate that the Hawd 
is a month worth of traveling distance. That's how big it is. But then there are some other narrations. مَا كَانَ مَسِيرَةُ أو مَسِيرُهُ بِقُرَابَةِ نُصْفِ شَهَرُ خَمْسَةَ عَشَرْ يَوْمًا There are some other narrations that indicate actually it's only two weeks worth of traveling distance. Because there's a hadith in Muslim again where the messenger said that the width, the width of the hawd is between the distance of Eilah and Juhfa. These are all areas in the Arabian Peninsula. Ayla to Juhfa, it was known in those days, it takes about two weeks of traveling to get from one to the other. That was about two weeks of traveling distance. Another example, عن حارثة رضي الله عنه أنه سمع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال حوضه ما بين صنعاء والمدينة صنعاء in Yemen these days, مدينة everybody knows Traveling in those days between those two places, it was about two weeks. It was a two-week journey. There or thereabouts. Ayla to Mecca. Also a two-week journey. So you've got these several narrations now, which indicate that the hold of the messenger was a travel distance of two weeks only. Whereas the first few narrations we mentioned, the Names of the places that were highlighted in those ones were places that are actually a month away from each other. So we have two sets of narrations so far. One set of narrations indicating a month worth of traveling distance. The other set of narrations indicating only two weeks worth of traveling distance. And there is a third set of narrations, another group of hadith, that all indicate that actually it is only three days worth of traveling distance. And that is actually only one narration. There is only one narration that indicates that it is three days worth of traveling distance. Jarba and Adrah, two places that are two villages in Sham, uh, Jarba and Adrah, and these two places it was known that you could get from one to the other in three days. <clears throat> so now we have an issue here. Regarding the question, how big is the hold of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? How big is the hold of the messenger? A group of narrations seem to indicate it is a month worth of travel distance. That's how big it is. The second group of narrations indicate it's only two weeks worth of travel distance. That's how big it is. And there's one narration that indicates it's only three days worth of travel distance. So how big is the hold in that case? These narrations all seem to indicate different things. And that's why the scholars, they ended up at different conclusions. And it's a difference of opinion between the scholars as to how large the hold of the messenger is. <coughs> the first opinion, there are several opinions on this. The first opinion regarding all these narrations is Al Qawlu al Awwal, or Nakul Ikhtalafu, Badadarika fi kafiya til jami ibn Hadi la hadith ala akwal in Hamsa. That they differed and ended up on five different opinions. There are five different explanations as to how big the hold of the messenger is. The first explanation is إِنَّمَا أَرَادَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ تَقْرِيبَ الْعِلْمِ بِسَاعَةِ الْحَوْضِ دُونَ إِرَادَةِ الْمَسَافَةِ أو إرادة المسافة المحققة وهو قول القاضي عياض One opinion says that it's very easy to combine between all these narrations. They say it's very simple. They say the messenger never intended a specific distance. That these examples he he was giving, these examples that he gave, they were just general examples. 
general examples just to indicate a general distance. It's like if somebody says to me now, what's the distance between Mecca and Medina? And I say to somebody, from Sheffield to London. Maybe next week somebody else asks me and I say, well, roughly Sheffield to Edinburgh. I've given two different examples. Maybe the third week somebody comes to me and I say, well, it's roughly from here to Carlisle. Another different example. And the distances are all going to be different. From here to Edinburgh, the mileage will be different. From here to London, from here to Carlisle. I've given different examples with different mileages. So how far is Mecca to Medina? You could say, well, I never intended a specific mileage. It's not exactly the mileage from here to London or from here to Edinburgh or from here to Carlisle. It's not about the exact mileage. The point was that it's a reasonable distance. From here to London is a reasonable distance. Here to Carlisle, other side of the country, west side is a reasonable difference. From here to Edinburgh is a reasonable. All of those examples indicate to you that it's a fairly big distance without indicating to you an exact mileage. That's what the first opinion says. They say it doesn't matter that some of them are a month of traveling, some of them are two weeks of traveling, some is only three days. The point the messenger was making was that it's big. Regardless of it's a month or two weeks, forget the specifics. The messenger was only giving those examples to highlight that the hold is big. That is the first opinion. However, Ibn Hajar said, that does not seem like a strong opinion. Why? Why? Anybody? Ibn Hajar said that does not appear to be a strong opinion, but why? If I now said to somebody, the distance, uh, imagine you're asking me how far is such and such a place from such and such a place, and I say to somebody from here, from Sheffield to London, next day somebody comes and asks me, and I say, oh, it's from here to Bradford. Now there's a problem, because from here to London is three times the distance from here to Bradford. So now my answers appear to be contradictory. How can I say to one person, the distance is the likes of similar to from here to London, and then tell somebody else, no, it's only from here to Bradford. Two completely different answers, two completely different distances. Now it would appear there's a contradiction. Now if those two people got together, and they said, yes, we asked, and he told us it's from here to London roughly, that's how far it is. And the other person says, well, I asked and he told me it's from here to Leeds only. Now they are going to be confused because the distances vary so much. Ibn Hajar said, that's why this first explanation could not be right. If the messenger wanted to give general example of distance, he would have given examples that were generally similar then. Not give an example of something that is only three days of travel distance and give examples of others that are a month of travel distance, then that would appear to be contradictory. If it was going to be a general statement, you'd keep in line with general examples that are similar. Similar. From here to London, from here to Edinburgh, similar. From here to Carlisle, maybe similar. But if I say from here to London, here to Edinburgh, then I say from here to Rotherham. Now all of a sudden it doesn't make sense. Here to Rotherham doesn't match up with here to London, here to Edinburgh. So they say, no, that can't be the reason. That can't be the explanation. There must be more to it than that. If the messenger only wanted to give a general example, he would have given examples that were similar. Not examples with this much difference a month to three days. So that's the first opinion and that's the refutation on the first opinion. The second opinion then. Some of the scholars said, okay, forget that. There's a different explanation. The second explanation some of them gave was, (coughs) Al-Qawl al-Thani, Anna hadha al-Ikhtilaf, Inna ma hasala li anna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana mukhatiban li kulli ta'ifatin bima kanat ta'arifu min masafati mawadi'iha. فيقول لأهل الشام ما بين أضرح وجرباء 
ولأهل اليمن من صنعاء إلى عدن وهكذا وتارة أخرى يقدر بالزمان فيقول مسيرة شهر والمعنى المقصود أنه حوض كبير متسع الجوانب والزوايا فكان ذلك بحسب من حضره ممن يعرف تلك الجهات فخاطب كل قوم بالجهة التي يعرفونها The second opinion is they said quite similar to the first opinion they said the messenger gave these different examples of different cities depending on who he was talking to so when he was talking to people who came from Sham he gave them examples of cities in Sham so they would understand and visualize the distance when he was talking to people from the other areas of the Arabian Peninsula from the Yemen side he gave them examples of cities in Yemen so they can visualize it by knowing those cities it's like now if somebody comes to me from France and they say, okay, what's the distance between Mecca and Medina? If I say to them, Sheffield to London, they don't know Sheffield to London. They're not from here even. So I need to give them some kind of example of cities in France. It's about Paris to Lyon or this or that and give examples they can understand from this uh, area. So the scholars, they said, that's why the messenger gave those different cities and different places. And that's why those differences ended up occurring a month or two weeks. He was giving everybody examples they could understand from their areas. Okay, fair enough. But what's going to be the problem with that? Same problem as the first one. Okay, no problem. Give examples that people will understand. But if that's what the messenger was doing, he would have given them examples that are again similar. Not give somebody an example of two places where it only takes three days to traverse and give somebody else an example where it takes a month to traverse that again has the same problem. So that opinion is not very strong either. There's a third opinion. القول الثالث أنه ليس في المسافة القصيرة ما يمنع من ثبوت المسافة الكبيرة. فكأن الله تفضل على نبيه وزاد في ساعة الحوض حتى بلغ المسافة الكبيرة. فالاعتماد على أطولها مسافة ذكره النووي. <تصفيق> Al-Imam al-Nawawi said that the narrations have no contradiction. That the narrations that talk about the smallest gaps, three days worth of traveling distance, maybe originally, initially, that's the size of the hold that was given to the messenger. But then as time went by, the revelation was carrying on for 23 years. As time went by, as the revelation continued, perhaps at some point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased his favor upon the messenger and increased the size of the hold. So then at that stage, the messenger started giving examples of the two weeks worth. Then maybe some time afterwards, Allah blessed the messenger again. A new revelation came telling him it's even bigger now. And so then perhaps the messenger started telling people it's about a month's travel distance. So they say there's no contradiction. Maybe over time, over that period of revelation, Allah continued to bless the messenger and increase the size of the hold. So the narrations with the smallest sizes were the original narrations. Then the ones about two weeks were the next narrations. Then the narrations about the month were the final set of narrations where the final revelation came telling the messenger that's how big it is now. And so upon this opinion, it's as though the narrations with the largest area, they are the final narrations to take and it's kind of like they abrogate the others. So according to that opinion, it's a month worth of traveling distance and that is the final opinion. Possibly. Al-Qawl al-Rabi' There is a fourth opinion. الاختلاف الحاصل إنما هو بسبب الطول والعرض فالمسافة الطويلة للطول والقصيرة للعرض Very straightforward opinion. They said that the distances that talk about the biggest amount, a month worth of traveling, 
That is the length of the hawd. And the distances that talk about the two weeks or so, that is the width of the hawd. So as though the hawd is a, what kind of shape? Rectangular kind of shape. That the big narrations are talking about the length of it. And the smaller narrations are talking about the width of it. So then there's no contradiction. They said maybe that's what it is. Very possible. But then we still have an issue. Which is that there weren't just two sets of narrations. There were three. You had the month. Maybe that's the length. You had the two weeks worth. Maybe that's the width. What about the three days one then? Hmm? The depth. MashaAllah. Perhaps. But there's another issue anyway. There is another problem anyway. There is another problem. The other problem is وَهَذَا الْقَوْلِ يَرُدُّهُ حَدِيثُ مُسْلِمْ There's a narration in Muslim which says وَزَوَايَاهُ سَوَا There's a narration that says the side, the corners, the angles, they're all equal. The sides are all equal. That it isn't a rectangular shape, it's a square kind of shape. That all of the sides and angles of it are equal. So they aren't longer sides and shorter sides. They are all similar. So that would be a problem upon trying to say that it's a rectangular shape and that's how these evidences weigh up. وَفِي رِوَايَةَ أُخْرَى عَرَضُهُ مِثْلُ طُولِهِ There's one narration that even says its width is the same as its length. The width is just like the length. وَأَنَعَمْ So that one again has a problem. الْقَوْلُ الْخَامِسْ The fifth opinion, they said, بِاخْتِلَافِ السَّيْرِ الْبَطِئِ وَهُوَ سَيْرُ الْأَثْقَالِ وَالسَّيْرِ السَّرِيعِ وَهُوَ سَيْرُ الرَّاكِبِ الْمُخِفِ They said, it is about how you travel those distances. They're all exactly the same. It just depends how you travel them, which is easy to understand. <coughs> if you go from here or, 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 or anywhere from this locality down to London on a flight, Bradford, Leeds Airport, Sheffield, I don't know, there's an airport, get a flight from here to London. It'll take you barely 25 minutes, 30 minutes of flight time. Go on a train from here to London, two hours. Go in a car, three hours, three and a half hours. It's all the same distance, but you could cover it in a plane in 25 minutes, in a train, two hours, in a car, four hours, go walking a day, two days, three days, four days. You're covering the same distance, but it's taking you different amount of times Different amounts of time depending on how you are traveling the distance. So maybe that one month worth of traveling distance could be covered by somebody in three days. Maybe it's a month when they used to travel for business and they used to have the caravans, the big caravans on the horses and everything. That would take you a month maybe to get across. But one person by himself on horseback, could cover it in three days. So the same distances, but different time frames, depending on how you cross them. And if that's the case, it means all of the narrations could be talking about exactly the same distance. It could be all talking about exactly the same distance. The time it takes to cross those distances just depends on how you travel. <coughs> So that is the fifth opinion, that there is no contradiction here. They're all the same distance. It is just simply about how those distances are crossed. So in this case, 
The fifth opinion is saying the narrations indicate it is a large pond because even somebody on horseback riding away and it takes three days, that's still a long distance. That's still somewhere far. It's not a small pond or a small lake. Imagine how big a a lake is. Huge lakes. If you're on horseback for an hour riding, you'd get to the end of it. Two hours. A day on horseback. But three days traveling so fast and that's how long it takes you to get to the other side. It must be huge. So they said it still indicates it's a large pond and all those distances are the same. From all these opinions, number five is a reasonably strong opinion. And also some of the scholars, they believe opinion one is also reasonably strong. Uh, But all of these, they have differences over them and scholars, they differ. But we can conclude for certain, without doubt, that it is a significant pond or hold. This isn't like a small lake. This is something huge, something huge and magnificent. Then, (coughs) Al-Mas'alatu Sabi'ah. We just have a couple of issues left on this topic. Al-Mas'alatu Sabi'ah. Man yudhadu anil hawb. Who are the people who will be turned away from the hawb of the messenger? We mentioned before, whoever drinks from it on that day will never experience thirst again. But there are certain people who will want to drink from it, but they'll be turned away and refused and not allowed to drink from it. Who are those people that will be turned away and refused to drink from it? ذَكَرَ أَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ أَنَّهُمْ ثَلَاثَةُ أَصْنَافِ That there are three types of people, three types of people who will not be allowed to drink from that pond on the, on the Day of Judgment. <coughs> the first category, الأول المرتدون those who apostated from Islam. Those who apostated, they will not be allowed to drink from the pond. وَدَلِيلُهُ قَوْلُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the evidence is the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. On that day, he will say, يَا رَبِّ أَصْحَابِي فَيُقَالْ إِنَّكَ لَا تَدْرِي مَا أَحْدَثُوا بَعْدَكْ إِنَّ هَؤُلَاءِ لَمْ يَزَالُوا مُرْتَدِّينَ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِهِمْ مُنْذُ فَارَقْتَهُمْ This hadith in Al-Bukhari and Muslim <coughs> that the messenger will say My Lord, my, my companions uh, meaning general companions meaning from my ummah But then it will be said to him, you do not know what they did after you. You do not know what they did after you. They did not cease to be apostates turned back on their heels ever since you left them. So they are the apostates, the ones who apostated. They will not be allowed to drink from that pond on that day. Secondly, الثاني المبتدعة المحدثون The innovators The مبتدعة The innovators They will not be allowed to drink from it And that's the same hadith إنك لا تدري ما أحدث بعدك You do not know what they invented after you What innovations they made up after you So the innovators will be refused Permission to drink from the hold of the messenger. Thirdly, a thalith. Man fahusha dhulmuhum wa ta'addihim wa fisquhum wa ifsaduhum. The people who excessively fell into wrongdoing and transgression and oppression and sinning 
those who were excessive in those affairs, excessively fell into wrongdoing and sinning and oppression, then the likes of those individuals will also be prohibited and prevented from drinking from the pond of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's mentioned, يَقُولُ أَبُوْ عُمَرْ ibn عَبْدِ الْبَرْ One of the scholars, وَكُلُّ مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي الدِّينِ مَا لَا يَرْضَاهُ اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يَأْذَنْ بِهِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ مِنَ الْمَطْرُودِينَ عَنِ الْحَوْضِ الْمُبْعَدِينَ عَنْهُ وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمْ وَأَشَدُّهُمْ طَرْدًا مَنْ خَالَفَ جَمَاعَةَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَفَارَقَ سَبِيلَهُمْ مِثْلَ الْخَوَارِجِ عَلَى اخْتِلَافِ فِرَقِهَا وَالرَّوَافِضْ عَلَى تَبَايُنِ ضَلَالِهَا وَالْمُعْتَزِلَ عَلَى أَصْنَافِ أَهْوَائِهَا فَهَؤُلَاءِ كُلُّهُمْ He mentioned that all of those people who innovate into the religion that which Allah is not pleased with and Allah did not permit, then they are cast away from the hold, turned away and cast away and expelled from the hold. And the most expelled ones, the ones who are most taken away, are the ones who opposed the body of the Muslims. And they separated away from the unity of the Muslims like the Khawarij and all of their different groups and the Rawafid and all of their misguidances, different types of them and the Mu'tazila and all of their different desires they followed, all of them will be rejected and shunned. And also, كَذَلِكَ أَظْظَلَمَهَ الْمُسْرِفُونَ فِي الْجُورِ وَالظُّلْمِ وَتَطْمِيسِ الْحَقِّ وَقَتْلِ أَهْلِهِ وَإِدْلَالِهِمْ الْمُعْلِنُونَ بِالْكَبَائِرِ الْمُسْتَخِفُونَ بِالْمَعَاصِ وجميع أهل الزيغ والأهواء والبدع كل هؤلاء يخاف يخاف عليهم أن يكونوا عن عنو بهذا الخبر. So all of these individuals, from the misguided ones, from the ones who committed sin and oppression and wrongdoing and killing and taking the rights of the people and committing major sins openly and belittling sins. All of the people of misguidance and desires and innovation, it is feared upon them, feared upon them that they are the ones who are intended by this narration, uh, that they will be rejected from that pond. That brings us to the end of the section regarding the hold of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Next week, insha'Allah ta'ala, we are on As-Sirat, the bridge over the hellfire. All of the descriptions about the bridge, the description of how the people will cross over the bridge, the darkness and the light that will occur, the bridge which is over hellfire, all of the details about that bridge, As-Sirat, that is what we'll discuss in the next lesson, insha'Allah ta'ala. So we'll conclude upon that for today then.